as I walked in the front door, all 215 employees were here in the showroom waiting for me. It's not really thank you, it's I love you. There is a secret hiding in plain sight in car dealerships all across the country. We've known this truth for years and we think it's time you know too. I'm Paul J. Daly and I've been an automotive entrepreneur and creator for over 20 years. And I'm Kyle Mountseer and have held just about every position at a car dealership. Join us as we travel the nation to share inspiring, real life stories of people that work in dealerships every day. We'll go behind the scenes to talk to frontline workers and bring you the truth about the largest retail industry in the country. This is More Than Cars. So they say in the South that the biscuits are really good. Are we in the South? We're technically we're okay. Absolutely I always in have to south. check because I'm. You know, Atlanta is without a doubt the South. Okay, okay. it is full South. <laughs> I just had a breakfast sandwich, and the biscuit was unlike biscuits I've eaten in the past. We're here at Feast Twenty Six. Feast Twenty Six just treated us. I got this hash. It had all the fixings and a hollandaise sauce that was Looked good. Just on. There was point. a little regret when I saw your show up. <laughs> a little bit of regret, and today we get to visit a new dealership. We do get to visit a new dealership and you can look at the store and know that it is unbelievable but the culture and the people inside raise the bar. Interestingly enough, Paul, Feast 26, the restaurant we're sitting in right now, is actually in Beaver Toyota where we're gonna be at all day today. Dun, dun, <laughs> which dun, I'm excited dun. because they also have a double smash burger. We're just gonna be able to learn from people, hear from people, talk to people. Can't wait to share the story of Beaver Toyota with the industry and with the world because it's a special one, a special one for any business. Maybe they'll let us do a little work too. Maybe they'll let's go get it. My name is John Carteropoli. My name is John Duran. This is Beaver Toyota. Are you sure you want my full name? Yes. And in the, in the best delivery possible. Kaoli Victoria del Consuelo Olivares Gonzalez. Say that. Repeat after her. <laughs> I ain't got that. I ain't got it. Kaoli is fine. Kaoli is fine. I needed a car. So my brother, he listened to the radio and he said, we have to go to Beaver Toyota because it's like kind of like 45 minutes from my house. So he's like, we have to go there. You're going to buy a car there. And I'm like, okay, let's go. We got here and of course we, he doesn't speak any English. So we asked for somebody in Spanish and Santa came along and she sold me my car. And then John Duran came along and he was like, you know, somebody who speaks English in Spanish because we're building this bilingual team and all that. Just like my brother was like, she does. And I'm like, uh, I do. And they're like, would you be interested? And, and I'm like, why it's not? Like she is. Yeah. She, she is. She's like, I guess I am. Yeah, I guess I am. <laughs> my name is John Duran. I'm the director of the bilingual relationship. So just a few years back, you came on with the Beaver organization and there was a very intentional reason for that. You can probably see I got a kind of a broken English. So what I did is just, I see the need for the community. 80% um, of the community speak Spanish at home. Buying a car for the first time is, a, is an experience. This is the second most important decision for everybody, any family or any person. So what I was thinking is, what if we can help the community to make that decision in their own language? Tell us a little bit about, like, explain the community and how, how the mindset works in that community. And it's really cool because um, in the Latino community, we don't say, hey, just go to that dealership and they're just going to help you. They, they, they're proud to say, hey, I got a friend in the car business. Go and see John Duran. That's my friend. I mean, I just sold a car to them, but they, they just consider you friend so that that makes a difference i'm always looking for bilingual people who get the opportunity to do i mean to change their life and and that's exactly what happened with Kaholi. ha sido así siempre desde muy niña muy motivada con todo muy eh, sobresaliente en todo lo que hace desde muy pequeña como dijo su mamá ha salido ha sido sobresaliente en, en todas sus tareas y tiene herencia porque mi papá fue 
También trabajó en una venta de vehículos en la Volkswagen Interamericana de Venezuela. Well, I found out that my uh, father, father, so my grandpa, um, he was the partner and the GM of a dealership in Venezuela for over 32 years. Wow. And I had no idea of that. It's in the blood. It's, it's in the blood. blood. So she's it's like, blood. oh, now it's all. I got like, this. That's <laughs> why it feels so natural. That's right. <laughs> you know, when somebody tells me, I don't think you can, uh, you're going to be able to do that. It's like, oh, no, really? You sure? I can do it? Okay, I'll do it. <laughs> Watch me. Love Watch it. me. What, what do you think Kohali's future in the automotive oh. industry is going to be? Yeah, the tú, la, la dueña de esto. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she says I'm going to own my own dealership. <laughs> the more people we talked to around the store, the family atmosphere was the theme we encountered over and over. It became clear that General Manager Patrick Abad was the heart and soul of this family. So we caught up with him for a quick tour. Speed round. Service first. Service first. Yeah, because sales always gets the glory. Forget that. Yeah. <laughs> Everything that you feel in this place is about our consumer, about our people. It's on purpose. It's on purpose. All technicians have pride in their work, Yep. right? Like, that's their thing. But to have them actually care about how the customer feels about them, that's right. Wow. That's a whole nother level. That's a different level. What's up? How you doing? Zach, good, good to meet you, man. And we're going to do some stuff in the shop. You ready to get some gear on and get ready? Let's do it. OK, Mark. it's the only way. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to get my hands dirty, and we're going to buff this hood. You're going to see if I still got it. Yes, sir. Uh, but first, I can't do it in this shirt. I have to get a, a beaver detailer shirt on. Yes, sir. So let's do it like they do on YouTube. And I think if you clap your hands, I'll be in a different shirt. Ready? Yep. I know, this is telling of me, I've literally never changed oil on a car in my life. So, this is a whole new experience for me. They didn't have these back when I was a detailer. The they only had the high-speed rotaries, oh, but this yeah. is an orbital. Yep. So you're supposed to not really get the swirl marks on this. There you go. Run it through, yeah, it's gonna make a, a big mess. See, like that. Just like that. Just like that. I had to show them what that looked like. Yeah. Not that I would have done that. All, all right, right. And once it gets close to the end, kind of give it a nice little flick. It's a little bit more. There it is. Hey. <laughs> little bit on the fingers. Not a professional yet. Yes, sir. Listen, if you ever need somebody to fill in, you make sure you call me. I'm definitely calling you. Sweet dog. Thank you for the help. Thank you, man. Hey, Paul. <laughs> Paul, I, I don't know. I don't know if you caught, you missed a whole spot right there. You missed a whole spot on the. Well, it's gonna be fine because when you start your engine and it doesn't start because you forgot to put the oil in, I think we'll be even. Uh, it's already running, it's running, it's full tilt. Man, these, I'll tell you one thing, these people are working hard. We took a bit of a detour to find out where dealers get their used cars from. Let's meet Jaden Abad, who buys and sells vehicles from the auction and customers every day. All right, so we're walking back to the war room, yep. right? Yep. Why do you call it the war room? Because all day, every day, it's we're, we're going to war to get cars. This is like mission control, <laughs> right? No, like, absolutely. Like most customers or, or people out there, they think like Kelly Blue Book mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. Edmonds, or they're gonna go, you know, and, and get a value for mm -hmm. their car. Yep. What's this system right here you have pulled up? So this is, right here, this is gonna be the vehicle buying center dashboard within VinQ. Um, so basically, this is a CRM for all of our customers that directly inquired into our website to get a value on the vehicle. Why, why would a customer want to sell a car to a dealer as opposed to like doing it on their own or maybe even trading their car somewhere? Why, why, why would that make sense for them? Well, at the end of the day, it comes down to process. All customers want nowadays is a quick, easy, and simple process. You know, when a customer comes in our store to sell a car, they're in and out in five, ten minutes. Um, they come in, sign paperwork, get a smile, get a nice tour, and they're gone. They're, they don't understand why it's so easy but it doesn't have to be difficult thanks for showing us around yeah, a little bit and uh this is so cool <laughs> hey have you heard of vinq the end-to-end -end inventory solution for auto dealers no Listen up. VinQ is building the future of retail automotive software solutions, supercharged by data and driven by intelligent automation. Sure, we might be a small, mighty team of software, marketing, and sales innovators that are committed to helping our customers win. But with you, we could be even mightier. Click the link to get started today. 
I will be saved from all my inventory problems if I just keep doing what I'm doing, I hope. With VinQ, you don't have to hope they'll go away. You can solve your inventory challenges. But how? VinQ will manage your entire inventory lifecycle on one platform from point of acquisition to point of sale. It's easy to learn and easy to use. Changing is really that easy? It is, especially with VinQ's talented team of automotive industry veterans. Solve your inventory challenges now at VinQ.com. It was that evening that um, he went to bed and the Lord woke me up at three o'clock in the morning. And so I went in and checked on him and his lips were blue. And so I checked his oxygen and it was in, it was like 56, something like that. And so I yanked him up out of the bed. I said, you gotta get up and you've gotta breathe. 30 days in a coma, you lose all of your muscle mass. I lost 40, 45 pounds and I couldn't move a finger. My name is John Carteropoli. I'm one, part of the sales leadership here at Beaver Toyota. You had a unique experience through COVID where you got to experience that a little bit. Can you walk us through just the personal care that, that you even got to experience as, as, as a team member here? In uh, December of uh, 2021, December, probably around the 17th, 18th, I got COVID. It got started to get worse and on the 26th of December I went into the hospital. And he didn't, he, because his oxygen was so low, he didn't even realize that he, what, where he was or what he was doing. So I immediately called 911. And then at that moment, it, we were like, you got this dad, you're mm -hmm. gonna get through this. And that, like, I've never seen my dad give up, but in that moment he gave up because he had been fighting for so long. And he just shook his head no. And we were like, no, dad, you're gonna make it. Yes. Like, we were getting <laughs> on to him. Patrick even said, he said, I'm gonna be here every single night until our homie walks out of the hospital. And I was like, okay, yeah, sure, sure you will. But they literally were there for like 60 plus nights. Get in a big old circle. We cry for about 10 minutes. We laugh for about 10 minutes. We cry for about 20 more. And then we pray. And um, at that point, once we got there, and we, we saw all the people that responded and all the love that was being displayed, you know, it was very evident that we couldn't stop going until we, we wheeled him back. I think it definitely connected our dealership more. I feel like we built a lot of closer emotional relationships. I think we show up for people better. I think that's what this atmosphere is all about. And I think the tragicness of it actually ended up being a super big blessing and is really taking our dealership to the next level because of it. My family was there, uh, my daughter, uh, she was the first one. And she had to explain to me what had happened and where I was. She had put some, some pictures on the window and she said, I'm doing this because everybody's downstairs and they want to know what room you're actually in. Uh, they're praying for you. You know, 50 plus people from Beaver every night for, you know, 50, 60 days. So they're working 12, 15 hour days and then driving an hour, hour and a half yeah. out to Brazelton, Georgia to go pray for somebody that they're not just there to sell cars, they're there to take care of their family, mm -hmm. to ch take care of the community, to change people's lives for the better. Being in a coma is like something that most of us haven't had to experience. And you said I was asleep. Can you tell us about like the experience of coming out of that? So the uh, January 26th was the, the day I woke up. When I woke up and I started looking around, the memories I have was thinking that, you know, I'm, I'm in a hospital environment, but with my military background, for some reason I thought I was in Hawaii in a military hospital mm -hmm. waiting to get released or, or whatnot. Can you tell me about the day when you walked back into the store for the first time, you woke up that morning and kind of explain how that day went up to the moment where you came in and how that felt? The moment I woke up from the coma, the thought on my mind was, I've got to get back to work. <laughs> <laughs> and how can I get back to work? I can't even move. Sounds like someone in the car business or yeah, military yeah. and yeah, yeah. Uh, so that morning I woke up like any day, showered and dressed. And uh, my wife kept telling me, don't go, don't go. You're not ready, you're not ready. But the, uh, the welcome was incredible. As I walked in the front door, all 215 employees were here in the showroom waiting for me. It's 
not really thank you, it's I love you. Mm. And you get to continue to love them and then love you. How long did it take you before you actually, you didn't do anything that day, did you? <laughs> actually, I did. <laughs> Got right back on the desk. Well, John, thank you so much for taking a little bit of time. Your story's inspiring. It's so cool to hear your history in the car business and wish you just the continued love of all the people that you have around you. Thank you. All right, one of the most quintessential dealership experiences that everyone has is driving by the store and you see all these vehicles lined up. Sometimes they don't look so good. Sometimes they look great. So what do you think? Do you think Kyle and I could, could do this? I don't know, you wanna try? Let's, Let's do try. it. Let's do all it. Right. All right, he's gonna, you're gonna mess them up. Yeah. And then we're gonna take care of it, right? Five minutes on the clock and wherever we are. Where's the key? What is he doing? <laughs> My strategy is to start with the middle one, work my way out. How do you release the parking brake in this thing? Where's the parking brake? What is this one? What? The parking brake's stuck. I'm only two years removed from a dealership, so I've had a couple line practices. I've got to roll the window up, they won't notice. Oh, we're looking terrible. That's a tight line right there. Let's go. Oh, okay. Give it to me. The winner is. Wow. Yeah, this this you you I'm win. Impressed. This line is it. This I'm is impressed. it. I'm impressed. <laughs> I'm impressed. See, your job is not easy, no. and you're really really great at it. So <laughs> I think we're gonna help you straighten that out, so you don't have more work to do. Cool. Well, I appreciate you guys <laughs> Thank coming you out. So much. Thanks, Zach. Appreciate <laughs> it, man. <laughs> One of the things that's super cool about this store is that they're so community centric that they built a whole commercial kitchen yep. and then got a local company who already does an amazing job and allowed them to expand their business into their store. Yep. All right, back here in the kitchen, full industrial kitchen. That's right. So this was set up when you got here. Exactly. All right, Spencer, slap that egg on there. Top it with a little hollandaise sauce. Let's drop this, drop that guy on there. Get a close up of this. They love the fact that they have this available to them when they're sitting waiting for their car to be serviced and they have something to do, some really great food to eat, and it's, it's been a great working experience for me. This place is packed with everything you'd expect to see at a Starbucks. We've got a salon here, they're bringing business people in. They've got a whole physical therapy outfit. So, I'm here with Taylor and you have these people like working back here. And they were just working downstairs. Yep. Um, and now they're working up here and they're gonna go back to working downstairs. Yeah. So um, what is it that you're doing up here and why are you here at Beaver Toyota? So bringing fitness, health and wellness, nutrition, workshops, events, community, all into one place, as if they don't have enough already. I'm just bringing that health and wellness aspect to it. Okay. Shoulders back, wait for four. Feet are underneath you. Three. See what we're gonna go five. Oh yeah. How'd I do? That's it. That's okay. it. Okay. Look. Are we done yet? Beauty. Three. I'm gonna pretend it doesn't hurt. Two. Two. One. Boom, baby. Move. Well, I have to say, I'm super jealous because the ability to come here and get a great workout in and someone who could help me, you know, stay aligned is an amazing thing. And the fact that it happens at this dealership and that you're so focused on it is a pretty inspiring thing. We're gonna go, we're gonna start it just like this. One, two, three. Well, this is Beaver. Oh, yeah. Beaver Toyota. All right, so Terry, you have uh, kind of taken a little bit of the ownership from what I understand of like just making sure this group gets together and coming along. What was the impetus for creating the Badass Girl Gang and the Badass Sister Squad? So I've been with Patrick many years, and through these years, he had created um, a leadership group that just had weekly meetings and studied John Maxwell and did all that. And it was, it was all, mostly guys, only one girl in there. And so one day I said to him, I have this idea. You might think I'm crazy, but what if we started a similar group, but we pick females in the dealership? And he looked out the window and he said, that's genius. And so I pulled, <laughs> up, like I, I pulled up the list I had already made of yes. the girls I had handpicked through the store. And we literally met within probably three weeks. 
basically this whole idea, we getting together was getting to know each other and, and it just made us um, connected more. So we have the same goal in the organization, that we have a same vision. So it really helped us to change our lives and then we we're basically having a second group um, with the younger ladies and it's really um, like life-changing experience. And I would also say that out of all of us, we've all, our lives have been changed, but SAT has been the biggest transformation. I think everyone would agree with that. What are some of those things that you've, that have made a massive impact on your life? This program actually opened my eyes like I didn't have work and life balance. I was more focused on work. I have uh, three kids. Uh, my son, um, we were at that crossroad that we're going part ways at that time when I started the, um, this group. And the one session that we had, it really helped me, made me realize that I gotta take some action. I need to talk to my son and be a mom and let him know that mom loves you. I never had that conversation with my 15 year old, but today we are the best friends. And if I hadn't had that conversation with my son, I don't know where my son will be. Wow. It would have, yeah. yeah. Everybody's tearing up now. <laughs> Everybody. <laughs> you guys. I remember that meeting. Yeah. I know y'all do too. Y'all going to mess me up back there in the background. <laughs> Did you ever think you'd come to work at a car dealership, no less? Someone's going to sit there and say, like, I would not have a relationship with my son if I wouldn't have been like y'all are a part of that instead of the, the stigma of like, we're going to, we're going to really rip some people off today. Right. Right. It's like, no, we're going to be better parents. Yes. We're going to be better family. We're going to be better oh, wow. friends. We're going to be better yeah. people. Well, ladies, thank you so much for sharing your story. I, like before we even started, I was like, Oh, we're going to be in a thing. <laughs> uh, so thanks for spending some time and, and Terry and Sat for sharing no, your story. No, thank you. Guys. Appreciate thank it. Thank you for getting it. Patrick, that is, that's quite a story, bro. It's amazing. Thanks for showing us around. You got incredible people. Let me, let me ask you a question. Yeah. You know, don't special people deserve a special place? Absolutely. Who's yeah. special? Both our customers and our employees. And they feel it when you come in here. Yep. I feel special for being I here. I feel special when I'm here. Danger, danger, just flew out the hangar. Out the darkness, darkness, hide they made us. Yeah. Found the light, now I've been on the rise. Whoa. Woke the hive and now we all Talk tough, now they all try and back out.